Hey guys, Crazy Postman here. As you know, over the last month or two, I've been having some charging problems with my Ionic 5 here. And originally, I thought it was my Tesla charger going out, but I replaced that with the Autel charger. And now the Autel charger seems to be having a little problem too. So we're going to do some investigating once and for all today, and we are going to figure out what is going on here with my charging. And I think you're going to be surprised at what we find out because it is not what I thought it was. And I may have to apologize to Altel for some of my previous videos. So buckle up nerds, get your multimeters out, your temperature sensor probes going. We're going to figure out what is going on with this Ionic 5. We are here at the Altel charger and it's set to charge at 40 amps right now. Now this is a 50 amp charger. I have it derated to 40 because I have it plugged into a NEMA 1450 instead of wired directly, which I could change, I may experiment with, but uh, for right now it's plugged into a NEMA 1450 so it's limited to 40 amps. We're going to go ahead and plug this in and see that it does bump all the way up to 40 amps. I have to go in the car real quick and tell it to charge at maximum. And we are going to go to EV settings, which I have programmed to that fast key there. Yes, I know, we cannot make it to the nearest DC fast charger. Which, it doesn't matter because that DC fast charger will not charge my car anyway. So we're going to go in here to EV settings, charge current, and we're going to bump that baby up to maximum. So let's go back over here and look. Okay, it did bump up. 9 hours and 50 minutes to hit 100%. Now, we don't need to go to 100%, so what we're going to do is lower that to 90%, which is my normal standard. So there you have it, 8 hours to 90%. Let's uh, see if this thing overheats. So we are going to go put our solar mitigation device on the Autel charger otherwise known as an inside out DoorDash bag. So this will reflect the sun rays and it will be just basically like having a cover over the charger. Now it does have a lot of space in here to get air in there so that won't affect anything. We're gonna let this run for a few hours. We are going to just unplug it and I'm gonna plug in a backup Tesla EVSE and see if it bumps back up to 40 amps. So. I will see y'all in a few hours. We will see what happens here. You can see we're down to just one little pixel. Unfortunately, we are 40 minutes in and I just got the notification that it has overheated. Looks like it got up to 240 degrees. I'll show you a screenshot here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in this Tesla 40 amp wall connector here and just kind of lay it on the ground and we'll see if it will boot right up back into 40 amps. So filling things before I unplug this, this is not really that hot to the touch. The plug down here is warm, but it's not hot. I mean, it's not what I would consider like danger hot. So we're gonna go ahead and unplug this And we're going to plug this one in down here. And we're going to let it boot up. All right, it's ready to go. And then we're going to plug this one in. Oh, I'm a dummy. <laughs> I need the adapter. <laughs> Can't plug this one in. Let me go get the adapter. All right, so we have the adapter now. I'm a dumb dumb. So the sun never even touched it. So that wasn't a factor at all. Let's, uh, I need both hands for this. Got the adapter attached. We got that connected to the car and it immediately started charging. Now I'm gonna set this back here a little bit. 
and let's uh, take a look at the app and see what's going on. So I just took a screen grab of the app. You can see here that it is down to 208 degrees and we are back charging at 40 amps. So we'll see what happens. We'll watch the temperatures and we will watch the amperage and see if the Tesla is able to continue on or if it just stops as well. Well, the same thing has happened. I just took a screen grab. We got up to 240 degrees and the car cut off charging. So you can see the Tesla is not charging down there. It doesn't show an error state, kind of like the Autel didn't. It didn't show an error state. It just showed charging suspended by car. So now you can see that it is not charging. It is just sitting here flashing and it says this inlet is 240 degrees. So what does this tell me? This tells me that it's a Hyundai problem and not an Autel or Tesla problem. So that is very interesting. I didn't think it was gonna be a car problem. So obviously Hyundai needs to add cooling to their charge port somehow. I don't know how other cars do that. Obviously there's no active cooling going all the way to the charge pins. And keep in mind, this car is supposed to be capable of 48 amps. And I only had it charging at 40 amps. And see what this screen says. Check charger for issues. See, it blames the charger. I hit OK. <laughs> the car straight blames the charger when uh, we've just uh, went through two different chargers and it's definitely not the charger. Since we know it's not the Autel EVSE now, what I'm going to do, okay, so turning the car on re-enabled charging. That is the same behavior that happened with the Autel charger plugged in. When I came in here and turned on the car, it enabled charging again. I wonder if leaving the car on will make any difference. So <laughs> we still can't make it to the, our nearest fast charger. We're a little bit short. So if we go into EV settings, current, if we reduce this, let's see what happens. Since we now know that it's not the Autel charger, I am going to continue charging with the Autel at this 35 amp rate now. I will put the sun protector back on it, but now we know that it's the car being the problem here, not the chargers. So I'm just gonna take the Tesla one back into the house and use the Autel one here. We're gonna go ahead and continue on. We're gonna plug that in and it should say it only goes up to 35 amps because I have the car set to reduced. There you have it. So we are charging again at the 35 amp rate. I got our sun shield on the Autel charger and we will see if uh, we have any problems at this amperage. Well, we hit the limit again. Vehicle charging suspended. Unfortunately, it is not the uh, charging station's fault. Don't know what else I can do. See, the Autel is not even warm. I mean, it's warm, but it's not having a hard time at all because I have it limited to 35 amps now. And it's still overheated. So, this is definitely not 200 degrees. I don't know if it's what it's saying is 200 degrees, if it's the individual pins in there or what. Okay, it's restarted charging now. We are only up to 16%. Oh, goodness gracious, this is gonna take a long time. Let's go ahead and bump it down to minimum and see if it still overheats. So we are now charging at minimum 
I don't even know how fast that is. 5.5 kilowatts. Oh my gosh, that sucks. So 5.5 kilowatts is 23.4 amps. This is gonna take me forever to recharge, you know? I didn't even look. How long did it suggest it's gonna take? 11 hours and 30 minutes? Hyundai, you gotta do better than this. I got somewhere to go. It is now on the minimum setting, about half as quick as it should be able to charge. I really like the Hyundai. I like its looks. I like its interior quality, but their technology is just lacking. So unfortunate. All right, so it's like 40 minutes later since my last update. The temperature on the connection has went down to 170 some odd degrees. So in the minimum setting in there in the car, it does not overheat so far anyway. I mean, it is only 88 degrees out here right now. And in the summertime, we could get into 115, 120 degrees. So, I mean, at 88 degrees, the temperature is dropping or holding steady. So what we're gonna do is a term that nobody probably ever thought of in an electric car. We're gonna feather the gas pedal just a little. Uh, I'm gonna bump it up to max, let it charge at the max rate until it overheats. And then I'm gonna put it back on minimum again. And I'm just gonna keep doing that because I gotta get some juice in this car because I need to go. So I'm gonna bump it up to max let it get all the way up to overheat it'll cut off i'll come out here and drop it down to minimum for 30 minutes and then do the same thing over and over until i have about 100 miles of range because i actually need to go and i'm being held up right now uh thanks altus oklahoma for not having any dc fast chargers okay so i bumped it up to max we will see uh how long it lasts and then we'll slow it down again. Well, never mind. I don't know how practical that's going to be. I uh, literally got about six minutes and it was up to 225 degrees again. So uh, it took 30 minutes to cool down to whatever it got to, and then six minutes to warm right back up to overheat situation. Hyundai, you got to get this fixed. This is a, a major oversight got to get some cooling back there to the charge port it is now seven hours later let's go in and just see let's go in and just see how much charge I've gotten in seven hours on low <laughs> hey I'm up to 52 percent 112 miles of range I can now officially leave on the trip that I needed to leave on like four hours ago so it is what it is um, it's a Hyundai issue not an Autel issue just so y'all are clear I again apologize Autel for thinking it was you now to be fair I did contact the Autel support and they didn't seem to know what was wrong with it either they thought their station might be overheating because of course it's sitting out there in the Sun and I'm sure they saw some high temperature values so when I told them I thought it was overheating, they believed me. <laughs> but now we know it's the car, not the charger. I'm sorry, Altel, for dragging your name through the mud when it wasn't you. So while I was waiting for my car to charge, for me to be able to leave, but now I can't because it's too late, I did do some research and evidently this is a known issue. There's a service bulletin out but you have to go into Hyundai to do the software update. And from what I understand, they don't actually fix anything. All they do is limit your charging somehow. So that's not really a fix. I can limit my own charging. <laughs> Hyundai, we need a real fix here. We need you to get on the ball and get us some uh, 48 amp charging. Even when it's hot outside, we need to charge. Not everybody lives in uh, 
50, 60 degree climates. So thanks for watching this episode. I hope we got some things cleared up on my charging issues and I will see y'all in the next one. That was, that was loud. What's going on up there? So buckle up, get your multimeters out and your temperature sensors. Really? Really? That wasn't necessary. Oh, I had my foot on the brake when I hit the power button. You can't do that, I found out. See, my foot is on the brake. If I hit the power button, the car does not go off. You have to have your foot off the brake and then hit the power button. Only when it's plugged in does it do that. I don't know if that's a bug or a feature.